And um, it's a paper that just came out from this Japanese group. And um, it's called the Subaru FMOS Galaxy Redshift Survey, or Fast Sound, and New Constraints on Gravity Theory from Redshift Space Distortions. Um, which uh, probably doesn't make much sense to you, but I'm going to um, see if we can explain this. But the, uh, the Subaru is actually a Japanese telescope. Um, it's in the 8 meter class, so it's um, one of the smaller telescopes, or it would be equivalent to, uh, in size to one of the smaller ones that Dimitri showed when he was showing the extremely large telescope. And, um, but uh, this telescope is um, actually on Mauna Kea in Hawaii, and what they were doing was um, to measure um, some of the furthest objects um, or some of the furthest galaxies that we can observe. And this uh, particular diagram um, is supposed to show the history of the universe. And so time um, starts, here is a Big Bang on the left end, and then time goes forward here all the way to the present. So we are at the present, or about 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang. And what the this cone-like thing is supposed to show is it's supposed to show the expansion of the universe so that um, we've lost one dimension. So instead of a three-dimensional space, we only have a two-dimensional space. But the Big Bang starts off um, at the, this far left end. And there's an initial period of expansion, very rapid, called inflation. And then the expansion um, goes a lot slower. But then towards um, the last half, of the history of the universe, we've found evidence that the universe has started expanding even faster. And so this period of rapid, or rapid getting uh, faster expansion, it, um, we think is due to something, this very mysterious force um, astronomers call dark energy. And right now we don't have a really good idea of what dark energy is, but there's very clear evidence that um, this expansion is taking place. Now, um, in the early history of the universe, we find that um, the very first stars and the very first galaxies developed uh, in the first um, several billion years of the history of the universe. And what happens is that um, there are small fluctuations in the expanding gas that comes out of the Big Bang. And these fluctuations are on the order of um, one in 100,000. So the gas is very smooth, but there are some places that are slightly denser by one 100,000th. And gravity, over time, pulls in more and more matter into those dense regions. And that's where um, the galaxies develop. Well, it turns out that the, how these galaxies develop um, depends on um, the theory of gravity. And so um, for 100 years now, our understanding of gravity has been basically been determined by Einstein's general theory of relativity. And so every um, test that we've made of Einstein's theory has proven, um, has shown that Einstein seems to be correct. But um, this idea of dark energy kind of adds a new wrinkle to it because dark energy was kind of un completely unexpected by astronomers when it was first discovered um, just um, over 15 years ago. And so uh, people have come up with a lot of alternate theories to try and explain um, dark energy. And some of them inv actually involve modifying Einstein or actually throwing out Einstein's general theory of relativity. And so people are interested in um, wondering, you know, is Einstein correct? Um, and one of the things that you can do is actually try and map these early galaxies very carefully because depending on the choice of um, gravity, the gravitational theory that you um, use, you'll have um, different um, evolutions of, um, those, uh, of the um, early galaxy clusters. And so that's what um, this research project basically did. They used the Subaru telescope and mapped um, just under 3,000 galaxies very carefully. And so this is a, um, a sort of a projection of those 3,000 galaxies. And what I put in, in here is the equivalent um, age of the galaxies after the Big Bang. So the, um, the closest um, galaxies are on the order of about 5 billion years. So the light that we're seeing um, comes 5 billion years after the Big Bang. And the furthest galaxies, um, we're, um, the, the light is being emitted from these galaxies um, just over 2 billion years after the Big Bang. So we would be way off over here, and we're looking um, into space 
And since it takes light a finite amount of time to travel to us, basically the further back we, um, away we look, the, um, the further in time we're seeing these galaxies. So that's why these galaxies here um, are about three billion years um, more recent than the light from these galaxies. So they uh, basically an analyzed the structure of um, these galaxies. And what they found is, <clears throat> so this is kind of a confusing plot, but um, this um, plot uh, basically shows the present day. So um, galaxies that are, that are very close to the present. And then as we go off to the right, we're looking at light that's um, from galaxies that are further and further away, and hence light that's coming further and further in the past. And so this particular study, all the data um, has been kind of averaged into this point here. So this corresponds to about 4.7 billion years after the Big Bang. This is the present day, about 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang. And all these other points are from other um, studies, from other um, teams that are also doing similar research. And so the earliest um, data before the study was 6.6 .6, uh, billion years after the Big Bang. So they basically have um, looked at galaxies about 2 billion years um, younger than the previous um, record holders. And then what they find is that if you look at um, not only this data point, but all the other data points from all the previous studies, and also if you look at, if you include the error bars, they seem to match this particular set of lines, which is the set of lines that um, agree um, or that, uh, that you get if you use Einstein's theory. And then these lines down here are alternate um, gravitational theories. And so what they show is that if you use um, Einstein's um, theory of gravity, it basically matches uh, more or less all the observations uh, that we see. Of course, there are some data points that don't quite make it like this one. But um, again, you have to sort of look at everything in aggregate instead of just picking and choosing um, one study. So um, Einstein has been successful, again, um, even after 100 years. And this is another test showing that his um, theory of gravity seems to hold um, not only um, in our recent past, but also much further in the past. Uh, because uh, these um, theories of gravity um, assume that um, the um, gravity actually changes over time to um, try and account for dark energy. Um, whereas Einstein's theory, um, the gravity doesn't change at all. All right. <clears throat>